Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad that you're here with me watching today and I have a little mini update for you guys. I have officially completed six months of posting to YouTube every single week making a video about marriage. In the beginning I had set a goal of doing this for six months like all in every week I was going to make a video and I have completed that task by the grace of God so I am just like super grateful grateful to the Lord for allowing me and inviting me to do this and thank you for everyone who's been watching and supporting and liking and sharing and subscribing. It means so much. I really believe at this time that the Lord is calling me to continue in making videos so for now I will be continuing and I just want to encourage you to keep on encouraging me because it really means a lot when you comment, send encouragement my way if you believe that what I'm doing is valuable and is really making a difference in people's lives. So today I want to talk about a friend who sticks closer than a brother. The season that I'm in right now, I am in the midst of doing a work that God has called me to do. And this is a specific work that I know for sure the Lord has put in my life to do in this season, in this time. And that is a work that is separate from me being a wife to Joel and being a mother to Addie. So I'm still doing doing those things that I'm called to, but he has also given me this additional work. And it has given me so much joy to be walking in this. However, there have been many moments of like pressing and crushing where I just feel like this is like squeezing the life out of me. This is such a big task that it's really taking, it's really requiring all of me to complete it, all of me in surrender to the Lord to complete it. And it's requiring me to do things, some things that I don't really desire to do. Like I'm just not really interested in doing those things. But the Lord has brought me to a place of surrender and just saying like, take my life, take my body, take all of me as a living sacrifice. Like I am willing to lay it down and give it all to you so that I can walk in your will and follow your commandments. And there was something that God showed showed me recently that really encouraged me to tie this all back into the friend that sticks closer to a brother. And this I found when I was reading the story of Moses, because as the Lord has led me in this new work, and maybe you're in a new work in your life, or maybe you are really focused in on your marriage. And this is your work right now that God is calling you to put all of yourself into. Maybe it's another work. Maybe it's your children. But in this time of leadership and being called to a work, the Lord has led me to study the life of Moses. So this is where I found this little treasure. It's Exodus 33 verse 11. The Lord used to speak to Moses face to face, just as a man speaks to his friend. And that word friend stuck out to me and I was just trying to meditate on this. God has called Moses to do this huge task, this heavy, weighty task. And yet in the midst of him walking in this heavy, weighty task, God is choosing to give Moses intimacy. He's choosing to come to him face to face, to be intimate with him as a friend. And this is the revelation that God was giving me as I'm walking in this heavy, weighty task that he's given me. I mean, being a wife and being a mother are weighty enough in and of themselves. And then this other task he's given me to do, I feel the weight and the burden almost of carrying this, carrying God's dream. And because I just want to do it in a way that's pleasing to him and that's honoring his will and fulfilling his will and his kingdom in the earth. And so this really spoke to me because God was saying, it's not just about your sacrifice and your obedience, but in that you're becoming my friend. In that we're becoming like friends. So I want to quick go back to last week, the past two weeks of videos, I've been sharing like this is the thing that will save marriages. And that's because the Holy Spirit spoke to me one morning and he said, Kelly, honor will save marriages. If my people would just get this and they would really meditate on and gain understanding and wisdom and insight in how to honor and to walk in honor towards their spouses, this one thing will 
change and transform marriages. It will save marriages. But many people are not willing to do this because honor takes obedience and it takes a laying down of your life in order to honor another person who maybe doesn't deserve it all of the time. And we talked about how there is a power of God in your obedience. When you obey, the presence of God is with you. Like how God called Moses and he said, my presence is going to go with you. Like Moses was fearful to go to Pharaoh, but God God said, look, I'm going to give you power. And he showed him the signs and wonders. He said, put your hand in your cloak. And he pulled it out and his hand was leprous. He put it back in and God healed him. I'm giving you this sign. I'm giving you your staff as a sign. It will turn into a snake. So the power and the presence of God is on you when you say, yes, I'm going to obey and walk in this way. It's a straight and narrow path. What God gave Moses to do was a very specific task. So you're not just out here living your life like whatever I feel like doing, I'm going to do. And I know that God loves me. So he's with me wherever I go. God is omnipresent. He's everywhere at all times, but his presence, his anointing, his grace upon a person to go above and beyond, to do the miraculous, to walk in the ways of Jesus, that presence of the Lord, the glory of the Lord is upon those who obey him, who walk in the very specific straight and narrow path that he has laid out for their life. And the Lord, has already predetermined the destiny and the calling of your life. There are specific works that he has set aside just for you to do. And he's calling you to walk in these works. He's not calling you to walk in my calling or anyone else's calling. He's not calling you to compare yourself to anyone else, but he has specific things for your life. And those things matter. And as I'm thinking about this, I want to share something that happened to me this morning. I went downstairs early first thing in the morning to put some laundry in in our basement and our basement was flooded about five to six inches of water and we've never been flooded before. As my husband and I are dealing with this situation, first of all, the Lord gave me a word for 2020 and it was flexible. And in so many situations, he's just showing me like, I am calling you this year to be flexible, to trust me, to be flexible, to be unshaken by things, but to be able to move and be flexible as things, as oppositions, as things are thrown at you, I want you to keep your eyes fixed on me and be flexible to follow the path that I have for you. Because although the path seems like swervy and turny as things are thrown to you, the path to the Lord is straight because he already sees it. He's already laid it out before you. So he sees it straight. We see it turning and twisting, but just know that God already knew. He already knew that we were going to face this flooding today. So when you're walking in obedience, expect opposition, expect things to kind of come in at you, but don't be shaken. Think about Moses. He went down and obeyed God. He had these signs and wonders. And what was the first thing that happened? Pharaoh was so upset that Moses even asked him this, that he made the workload for the Israelites even greater and took away their resources. And all the Israelites, Israelites hated Moses, the one who was supposed to deliver them. So that's the first thing that happened in Moses' obedience. What if this shook him? What if this opposition caused him to say, I quit, I give up? Because that's what I'm talking about, how I feel pressed and just kind of squeezed is that there have been things that have come up and um, disappointments with people and things like that, where I have moments where I'm like, Lord, I just want to like attend church every week. Like I could just go to church every Sunday and not embark in this task that you've called me to do. I could have said no to what you called me to do and still be your daughter, but God has so much more and there is fullness of joy in his presence and in following him. It is worth it. And so it is worth it to keep fighting for your marriage and to keep going. It is so worth it. There is a blessing in your obedience and that is the presence of God. And what comes with the presence of God? His power, his peace, his wisdom and revelation, his directing, most importantly and most special, his intimacy and his friendship. So my biggest advice when people come to me and they're saying that their marriage is suffering and struggling, and it is that 
despite your hurt, despite your pain, you have to choose something. You have to choose to obey God. You have to choose to walk in a militant obedience where you are saying yes to the will of God. And so I'm talking about yes to following the word of God, the Bible, but I'm mostly talking about the things he's specifically telling you to do, the things he is specifically ministering to you as ways to obey in walking in your marriage. In a lot of my previous videos, we've talked about like prayer declarations, things to speak over your marriage, the will of God to speak. Some of those are that the two are now one flesh. So you're declaring over your marriage, like we are one flesh. We are one. And that's one of those things where, yes, you want to declare it and you want to pray it. And this is what God has said. We have become one in the spirit, but you have to walk out being one. So like God says, the bride, the church is one, but we have to walk in unity. We can't just say we're one. There's divisions in the church. We have to walk and move towards God's will of us being one. And that's the same thing in the marriage. So we declare, yes, we want to be one. God has said, and he's set up and established this beautiful thing that in the spirit, he is making us one flesh, but we have to desire this will and we have to learn how to walk in it. And so God wants to speak to us, but we have to be obedient to what he speaks so that we can start walking in it. What does obedience and friendship have in common? Because this video is about being a friend of the one who sticks closer than a brother. What does that friendship and obedience have in common? How are they connected? Because when I think of friendship, I don't think of obedience at all. I think of like fun times. I think of companion. And when I think of obedience, I think about like my parents honoring my parents, obeying what they tell me. I think of probably not fun, like things that I don't want to do. So how do these relate? I'm so glad you asked. I have an answer for you. If you guys want to turn with me to John chapter 15, verse 12 through 14, read it with me. So this is my commandment that you love one another just as I've loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that one lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. So here we have Jesus linking friendship and obeying God's commandments in the same sentence. So what is his main commandment? It's love, that you love one another. So sometimes I think that we have like a very fluffy picture and concept of love, but actually in here, it's saying that love requires a laying down of your life. Jesus laid his life down on the cross. It was not a pretty picture. It was not fluffy, feel good love. He laid his life down on the cross. He became a curse hanging on a tree for our sake. He took on all the sin of the world. He bore all of our grief and shame. He laid down everything fully as a man, experiencing all the pain and struggle of it all. That is the picture of love that we're given. And that is the picture of love that we are called to live in. The Bible said, you must deny yourself, pick up your cross daily and follow me. You're going to the same place that Jesus went. If you want to obey this commandment that you love one another, just as I have loved you, greater love has no one than this, that one lay down his life for his friends. This means in places of opposition in your marriage, when things are coming at you and it seems like all is coming against you, your spouse is coming against you, maybe your children, maybe your workplace, maybe it just seems like there's so much opposition in your life. Jesus is saying, I want you to lay your life down. I want you to lay your rights down. I want you to be flexible because I see a straight path in all of this. And if you'll just look to me and ask me, I'm going to show you exactly what you need to do. I'm going to show you exactly how I want you to obey so that I can deliver you out. But it's not going to be easy. You're going to be pressed. You're going to be crushed. But I'm going to do a new thing in your life. This is the only way transformation comes. This is the only way he can do a new thing. I have been listening to on repeat right now, New Wine by Hillsong. It's, um, make me a vessel, make me an offering, make me whatever you want me to be. Oh, I came here with nothing. 
And all you've given me, Jesus, make new wine out of me. It seems like you're laying down your life and you're giving up all and you're surrendering all, but it's to carry his new fire. He's making us, he's making new wine out of us. So stay hopeful that even though you feel pressed and you feel crushed, he is making new wine out of you. Go listen to the song. I've been playing it on repeat and the Lord is just giving me revelation. The verse is like, in the pressing, in the crushing, you are making new wine. So just be encouraged today that even if you feel opposed, you feel crushed and pressed, know that the Lord is in it. Like the Lord is with you. If you're choosing to walk in that straight and narrow, you're a friend of God. And that friend sticks closer than a brother. There was even a time last night where I was just getting irritated and offended so easily yesterday. And it put me in a bad attitude and a bad mood. And (laughs) how many know that when the wife is in a bad mood, it affects the whole family. And I think like my husband can't stand it when I'm in a bad mood. It, he just can't. He's just like, what's wrong? What's wrong? And I sometimes I haven't processed fully why. I don't really know. And maybe some people can relate to that. But I just, I wasn't at a place where I was ready to talk about it. And I also wasn't at a place where I could just put a smile on yet. So I went into the bathroom and just sat on the toilet. <laughs> When you're a mom, you have to find these creative ways to get away for a minute. But uh, I went on the toilet and I was just crying out to God, like, because God loves when we are just real with him. Can we just be real with the Lord? This is where I'm at right now. I am grumpy. I feel offended. I feel hurt. I don't even know why. And just take it before the Lord. And His presence just came upon me and I cried and just his healing came upon me. And he's like, Kelly, I know that you feel really far from me right now. I know that you feel like you're not living in the character of Jesus right now. And you feel really far away from me right now because you're grumpy and you're offended. But I want you to know something that I've already declared that I'm your friend. Like I showed you in Moses's life, you're walking in my command and in my way. And I've already proven to you that I'm your friend right now. And so even though you feel far, I am with you. I am with you. My presence is upon you. Turn from that way and walk in hope and in joy now. I am with you. And just like that in a matter of less than a minute, that's how good God is and how faithful and how his closeness can transform us and carry us down the straight and narrow path. So you are my friends if you do what I command you. And then verse 15 says, No longer do I call you slaves, for the slave does not know what his master is doing. But I've called you friends, for all things that I've heard from my father I have made known to you. So although the concept of obedience might feel like I'm just a slave to someone else because I have to do what they're telling me to do, that is actually not the way that God sees it. And it's not the way that he's calling you into it. Instead of calling you into it that way, he's calling you into it from a place of intimacy and friendship because he's saying, I'm calling you into things and I'm showing you my will. I'm revealing feeling things to you and I'm giving you vision for the good things that I'm doing. I'm giving you vision for how I want to save the whole world. I'm giving you vision for things that matter. I'm giving you vision for love. And so he's calling us in and he is revealing and he is speaking to us. And that is the most exciting part. The almighty God coming face to face as a friend, like with Moses and ministering to us what he would have us do. And what is the promised land? What is the ultimate goal that he is leading us into for our lives. And I believe he wants to speak that over everyone here and over every marriage here. So next week, I'm going to talk about how I learned to hear the voice of God, because in order to obey him and to walk in his ways and to be intimately close as a friend with Jesus, 
You have to be able to hear the voice of God and know that you're hearing the voice of God. I just speak over you today that the goodness of the Lord would follow you all the days of this week until we meet again next week. Thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you then. Bye.